And at this time, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, appreciate everyone <coughs> working <coughs> with us here to make this happen, given this very unusual time. So at this time, um, I would ask uh, Commissioner Mark Jones to lead us in the invocation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. Father, um, we come here today, Lord, um, in very unique times. But Father, we understand that you're sovereign over all things. That, uh, nothing that is going on here surprises you. And so, Lord, today we acknowledge that. We thank you for your mercy, your blessing, and your grace that has placed us in this freest of all lands. We pray, Father, today for a special hedge of protection around our health care workers, our emergency service workers, our law enforcement, Father, and, and, and Father, the, the families of this great and wonderful county that you placed us in. So, Lord, today give us wisdom, give us discernment, uh, give us, um, Lord, give us uh, the knowledge and understanding uh, to do what you called us to do for this great and wonderful county and nation that you placed us in. Uh, we pray this prayer in Christ's wonderful name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> all right, if we can all join together and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, and the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, under God, God indivisible, 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 and with liberty and justice for all. Yes, to the best of all. Well, all right, very good. Okay, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Uh, next, we move to the F. Yes. The, uh, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 168-86 and the North Carolina Board of County Commissioners Code of Ethics adopted December 2, 2019, I'd ask each of you before you adopt the agenda if there's any actual, potential, or perceived conflicts of interest with respect to any matter on the proposed agenda which come before the board for a vote at this meeting today. If so, please speak up and let the board know at this time before the agenda is adopted. Uh, I would again call on Mark Jones. Any no conflicts. Benita Finney. No conflicts. Terry Reniger. No conflicts. James Blakely. No conflict. Richard Poindexter. No conflicts. All right, so the first new business item we have is to consider adopting a policy to deal with the state of emergency and electronic meetings. Um, so, uh, John or Ed, if you got anything you want to well, point out we, about that before we vote? Yes, uh, we drafted this based upon all the different blogs, Coates Cannons and other emails that we received from the School of Government, also from attorneys across the state, chimed in on, on what they were doing in their individual counties and uh, believe that at this point in time it would pass mustard if it ever went over to the courthouse. Mr. Chairman, uh, as Mr. Vogler said, we spent plenty of time on this, trying to make it easy as possible on <clears throat> excuse me, citizens to be able to call in uh, for anyone who wanted to uh, make a public comment, but then also for all of you calling in, this is new territory for us all. I think we're we're uh, doing the best we can to allow different forms and means of uh, participation in these uh, very interesting times. Um, I do know that we've talked to our tech solutions department, and there there are issues we have to consider uh, when it comes to. Um, webinars and participations there, particularly some security related issues that other governments have experienced. So uh, taking that into account in the, f the format that we're using today, all that was done in consultation with the School of Government until some of those issues get resolved. We feel like this is the easiest, simplest form of communication until we get back to normal, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to, uh, to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, anybody have any comments about the 
the resolution, or not the resolution, but the authorization. Okay, this will, um, we're seeing now, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the authorization. So moved. I'll make that motion. Okay, I heard Benita first. Um, did somebody second it? I'll second it. Okay, James seconds it. Any further discussion? Seeing that on, uh, everybody, uh, I guess we'll have a... We'll, we'll, do, we'll do a roll call, call on that. Mr. Um, Mark Jones? Yes. Benita Feeney? Yes. Terry Reniger? Yes. James Blakely? Yes. Richard Poindexter? Yes. All right. So that is approved. So next, uh, we go to, we will adopt the agenda, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. One like to make that motion. Mark Jones makes the motion. Okay. Have a second. We need a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Ed, I guess you need to do the uh, roll call vote. Okay, another vote then. Mark Jones? Yes. Benita Feeney? Yes. Terry Reniger? Yes. James Blakely? Yes. Richard Poindexter? Yes. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is public comments. Uh, I know we have a new format for that. Do we have anyone let us know that they were planning to call in? Mr. Chair, no one uh, has submitted anything for public comments. Okay. All right. Next, we move to the presentation. Uh, call on Suzanne Wright to make a presentation on the COVID-19 update, please. Suzanne, John is uh, getting ready to unmute you as we speak. Can you speak to let us know you're there? I'm here. There you are. All right. The floor is yours. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to share this COVID-19 update with you today. Um, I also want to take time to thank the board and Mr. Eller for being proactive and implementing measures to protect staff and residents during this crisis. I'll start with the most current COVID-19 happenings. Um, Executive Order number 131 was issued by Governor Cooper on April 9th, 2020. Um, Executive Order 131 requires new social distancing policies for open retail and grocery stores, institutes mandatory protective measures for long-term care facilities, and includes additional measures that increase the rate at which unemployment claims are processed. And this order goes into effect today at 5 p.m. Over the weekend, Davie County Health and Human Services shared a press release from Bermuda Commons Nursing and Rehabilitation Center announcing that one of its residents tested positive for COVID-19. I want to note that long-term care and assisted living facilities are faced with significant challenges in controlling the spread of COVID-19, many that are beyond their control but required for comprehensive care of their residents. Bermuda Commons and all other assisted living and long-term care facilities in Davie County implemented strict control measures over a month ago. Most have implemented stricter measures than those issued by the governor on Friday, and we appreciate their ongoing efforts. <clears throat> to give you an up-to-date picture of where we are with COVID-19 cases, uh, Davie has a total of 22 lab-confirmed cases, and sadly, two of our residents died from complications associated with COVID-19. 17 of our 22 cases are over the age of 50, and 19 of the 22 lab-confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Davie have met requirements to be released from isolation. Health Department staff members investigate and complete contact tracing for each lab-confirmed case, meaning they work to identify others that have been in close contact with the individual testing positive for COVID-19. Anyone identified as close contact is then informed, assessed, and guided appropriately. These individuals are asked to monitor for symptoms and quarantine at home for at least 14 days. Through investigation and contact tracing, 
health department staff learned that cases in Davie County are linked to church functions. Some attended church functions in this county or in bordering counties. They attended mass gatherings. Some attended events with more than 10 people and social, social distancing wasn't practiced. And these were early on. Travel, some travel, not to other countries, but to other states and other counties. Some had close contact with a family member who tested positive for COVID-19. And general community spread was determined for others. Community spread means that we don't know how someone contracted COVID-19. They didn't have contact with someone who, te who is tested positive and they have not traveled to a highly impacted area. We also learned that there have been lab confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Davie County where the individual showed no symptoms at all. These were close contacts of other individuals testing positive. There have been individuals tested that receive a negative lab test result initially and then test positive at a later date. This typically occurs if symptoms persist and another test is administered. Many people with COVID-19 symptoms are never tested. Many have been seen by medical providers and asked to follow the same guidance as those testing positive for COVID-19. At the beginning of this pandemic, only those showing symptoms were believed to be contagious. But we now know that individuals can be contagious several days before they experience the first symptoms. This is why it's important to act as if everyone is contagious right now. Public health staff have been asked to name the individuals that have tested positive for COVID-19. Please know that any information that identifies a person who has or may have had COVID-19 is protected by North Carolina's Communicable Disease Confidentiality Law and the HIPAA Privacy Rule. For example, <clears throat> if a single member of a church is positive for COVID-19 and we release the name of that church, it would be possible to, ident to identify the individual with COVID-19. Therefore, we'd be unable to release the name of the church to the public. Just like with Bermuda Commons, we were unable to release the name of the facility because it's the residence of a positive case which would be like sharing the individual's home address. Bermuda Commons can release that information, but the health department cannot. During this crisis, public health is permitted to provide limited information to other first responders for the protection of health and to prevent further spread. Public health provides the minimum information necessary to accomplish the purpose for the disclosure. The information provided should be coupled with screening and other protective measures required of each first responder group, and that's being done. People have also asked about where individuals with lab confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been in this community, but please know that you run the risk of contracting the virus everywhere right now, regardless of where these individuals have been, and here's why. First. Public health staff monitor laboratory confirmed cases so we know where individuals with positive cases are and have been. And remember, some of them have no idea where they con contracted the virus. Second, guidance from CDC and the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services states that those testing positive for COVID-19 can be released from isolation seven days after they first showed symptoms and three days after they're fever-free without using fever-reducing medicine. It's taken between five to 10 days to get lab results on these confirmed cases, which means many of our positive cases met the requirements to no longer be isolated at home by the time we receive those lab results. And finally, not everyone with COVID-19 has symptoms, and not everyone with COVID-19 symptoms get tested, which means there's no way to track where these individuals have been. And that's why you're gonna to continue to hear the same guidance over and over, which is stay home if you can, stay six feet away from others if you have to go out, wash your hands after touching anything that doesn't belong to you, keep hands away from your face, clean and disinfect surfaces frequently, wear a face covering when out in public and six feet of separation from others can't be achieved, and, and continue to act as if everyone is contagious. And I have to end by thanking community residents for adhering to guidance and all executive orders from the governor, community partners and county departments for going above and beyond to protect the health and safety of our residents, and health and human services staff are working tirelessly to continue providing nourishment, health care services, and financial and protective services that many can't live without right now. Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, if, if I might, I just want to thank um, Ms. Wright and her staff, all the public health team, um, and, and I could go on and on uh, about our other departments as well, uh, but since she's presenting here, there's been a long, a, a long um, few days, uh, very long days that have occurred and uh, many hours that she and her staff has spent uh, day and night because I know we've talked most of those times um, in, in keeping up and trying to communicate with, with even what she can share uh, with me. But I do know how much time and energy they've put into this, and, and I do appreciate, Ms. Wright, all that you've done um, to help us, and I know... Um, uh, we continue to pray for you and your staff and the families that you're serving. And commissioners, I know you you may have some questions of Ms. Wright. So, Mr. Chairman, before uh, before we turn it over, we wanted to make sure she she tried to address the the frequently asked questions that we're getting. Uh, but if there's anything outstanding, um, feel free to ask at this time. Mr. Chairman, I, this is Mark. I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, Suzanne, you indicated we have had uh, 22 cases uh, in terms of, you know, uh, verified cases in Davie County. Just a couple of questions off of that. Sure. Uh, how, how many of those cases have individuals been hospitalized? There were three that were hospitalized. So out of the 22 cases, only three hospitalized, okay? Secondly, and last question, currently, out of the 22 cases, I, I noticed... I'm sorry, I missed okay. that. I, well, I, I stopped. Okay. <laughs> I can't, you, you had 22 active cases, 19 had been uh, basically, I guess, uh, we're, we're no longer quarantined or required to be quarantined. That left me with a, with a three. Now, in terms of active cases right now, people that are quarantined or hospitalized, how many do we have? Is it three or is it less than that three? Let's see. I know people keep asking me what kind of common core math we're doing, but um, yeah. we have to keep up with the total number of cases. We've had 22 okay. total cases, right? We had, two, we had two deaths. Okay. We'll take that number to 20, right? Yeah. We have 19 that have met the requirements to no longer be isolated. And so we have one active case currently. So basically right now we've had three hospitalized in, in the course of the time that you've been testing, and we have one basically active case right now in Davie right. County. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Suzanne, and thank you for your staff and all the hard work you guys are doing. I, uh, we pray for you daily. Well, thank you. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions for uh, Ms. Wright? This is Richard Poindexter. I'd just like to say thank you for the diligent work you and your department have done, and not only you, but the whole county. Yeah, thank you. I think all the county departments have really picked up. I know that um, Brian Bird drove to Raleigh Saturday and picked up additional collection kits for us. I know law enforcement's been working long and hard, and I don't think we could do a lot of this without our technology solutions. Uh, department as well. So we have a lot of folks that have contributed to this response and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So thank you. Yes. Suzanne, I have one question for you. Sure. Um, so obviously the situation is so fluid. We're all learning and changing daily as we learn. Um, what is the current uh, testing method that we're doing or we, we have the kits now to do the swab or the prick or finger prick or where where, where kind of have we evolved to like right now where what does that look like okay. we're still doing the swabs it's still a, a nasal collection a nasal swab and we have just like i said mr bird went and picked up collection kits for us on saturday um, most private providers have their own 
Uh, we got these from the state. Um, so we now have collection kits to help take care of our law enforcement, first responders, and uh, our long-term care facilities. What, what kind of turnaround time? So if, if somebody comes in tomorrow, or a test is swabbed, and, and what, what are we looking at to know? How, how long now are we on result? Well, that, that depends, really. It's, it's anywhere from two to four days uh, for the state lab, but it has taken up to 10 days uh, to get results from private labs and from the state. But right now, the turnaround is much quicker than it was originally. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I may, Ms. Wright, could you, because I know we've got this question a lot as well, to, to Mr. Blakely's point, for, for the longest time, um, only you could only be tested through a primary care uh, provider or a medical center, and then the tests were so scarce that at one point uh, we do know that there were people who were symptomatic that were not being tested, which made it difficult for any county, much less Davie County, to identify um, and treat from a communicable disease perspective. So uh, anything you want to clarify regarding that? Because I know there's been a lot of questions about the actual numbers, but the numbers are only for those who've actually had a positive test and who was able to be tested. Do you want to clarify that? Yeah, there, <clears throat> there are a lot of people in this community that have symptoms consistent with COVID-19, but the criteria for testing is pretty strict. <clears throat> it's, it still includes out-of-state travel, out-of-country out travel, uh, fever, cough, uh, high, fe high fever, cough. And so a lot of people have these symptoms, but they don't meet all the criteria for testing. So not everybody in the county is being tested for this right now. And originally, we received three collection kits from the state. That's all the health department received was we received three. And so just recently, we were able to get our hands on more collection kits, and we will put those to use with our, our first responders, our law enforcement, and uh, long-term care facility and assisted living facilities. Um, I have a question. Um, so right now, the, just to follow up on the testing thought, the, right now we're using the swab and that's taking whatever, three to 10 days to get back. Uh, are we anticipating having the, the five to 20 minute uh, result test available to us anytime soon or do we know about that? Uh, we have not had any indication that we're gonna have those tests anytime soon. I'd like to. Is there any, uh, again, I should have started by saying thank you for all you've done. It's uh, been an incredible effort. And um, again, thoughts and prayers to you and your staff each day. It uh, has been an incredible time. Um, but uh, from from a needs perspective, uh, Suzanne, is there anything that um, we could do for you that we're not doing, this board can do for you? I think you all have implemented measures that's helped us protect staff uh, and residents. So uh, for those measures, we're, we're very appreciative because otherwise, if, we, if we'd had sickness among our staff members, I don't know where we would be right now. So thank you for offering. Any other questions for Ms. Wright? Hearing none. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Next presentation we have is our our emergency personnel policies, uh, Mr. Eller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. I'll, I'll go through this quickly because I know we've been talking about this for a few days now. We're trying to do the best we can to monitor this rapidly changing condition associated with COVID-19. And, and the 
really prepare for this impact, uh, not only to our workforce that you're seeing in, in many workforces across the state right now. Our top priorities, as you know, are the health and safety of our employees, and, and we're trying our best to maintain uh, our essential services to our citizens. We're, um, we have this state of emergency declaration, and, and uh, we already have a, a current human resources policy. We're trying to do the best we can uh, in, in this unique of times to get some flexibility uh, to our uh, personnel policy, and we're following the guidance of the state and federal level. Uh, those policies and interpretation uh, seems to change very frequently as well, and we're striving to keep up with all those things as much as possible, uh, from conference calls to webinars to school of government posts and, and clarifying those. And uh, I know Ms. West and Ms. Moyer and Mr. Vogler and I uh, continue to talk about those as we need to. We're looking uh, uh, to put an interim or uh, temporary policy in place for human resources to help uh, help guide us as it relates to some of these state and federal changes that we're experiencing. And the policy would remain in place so long as the county is operating under the COVID-19 state of emergency until further decisions are made or, or until the state or federal resources related to COVID-19 may expire. <coughs> and I will talk about those here in a minute. Uh, many of our staff, is, as all of you know, provide essential services to those who are in need during this emergency just like they do every day even before this and others have changed the way now that they're having to work to provide services to our citizens in a very creative way uh, our work volume has changed without being able to serve our citizens face to face in certain situations but our department directors have and are continuing to follow their contingency plans during uh, these times the truth is is that we really have no clue to know how long this epidemic's going to last and some say by the end of april others say it may not even peak until late june or even early july and, and we're hoping uh, the sooner the better for us so we can get back to business as usual but local governments all over our state are really seeing this um, this impact them not only from uh, the budget side and, and the fiscal uh, side of things because local governments anticipate revenues from sales tax and service fees and collections but if those things are not received timely as you well know budgets are impacted so many governments are questioning their financial situations right now because they really don't have uh, a clue as to how long this is going to last uh, and our desire is really to take the long-term approach offering as much flexibility and decision making to our employees while being able to sustain our workforce over the long haul while everyone's goal is to get through this emergency and, and back to business as soon as possible we've tried to develop some temporary flexibility to allow us to weather this storm until that happens and we're really basing a lot of our work on, on the governor's uh, orders and also the the president's guidance as well we have to be able to discern uh, essential work duties related to this emergency among many of our departments to ensure compliance and we're working on uh, that with our department directors right now we have to not only prepare for the next few weeks ahead uh, but what we're dealing with today and we feel like uh, we're allowing flexibility uh, and we've allowed for alternate work uh, options teleworking where possible uh, leave options for staff. We're doing staggered shifts where we can. Uh, we're trying our best to, uh, uh, and we are uh, with these state and federal policy interpretations and changes that are occurring. As you know, there's some resources that were created at the state and federal level for COVID-19, and, and we're in the process of trying to get that out to our staff as well. Uh, the good news is that the policy we're trying to develop here in this addendum will help us for whatever measures we have to put in place, the present, but also things to come. Uh, and so with that, uh, we're basing our work on those contingency plans that department directors uh, have, have and are continuing to implement, but also uh, as we look at the, uh, the services that are essential to this emergency and how we respond to those as well, and giving flexibility wherever we can for staff uh, who also have accrued leave. So with that, I just want to say thank you. We appreciate your support of that. We appreciate the ability to navigate this uh, uh, through uh, in a way that's so different for us all that just isn't typical for our current human resources policy. But uh, we're doing our best to make sure that resources that are available for our staff, that we can uh, provide those wherever possible with these new 
resources that are also being uh, made available to us uh, throughout this epidemic. So uh, for that, I know there's no formal vote on this tonight or today, but I do appreciate your support as we try to be as flexible as we can to, to weather this storm uh, because nothing, of, nothing about what we're talking about is typical right now. Uh, so, again, you've supported your staff, as you heard Ms. Wright say. Uh, our departments are teaming very well together to get through this, uh, and I'm just exceedingly proud of our staff and, and for you and your support throughout this. So, uh, so thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, I don't know if, if anybody has any questions. Uh, if not, we can move on, on the agenda. Can I move uh, Mr. Aaron and Ms. Wells to spend and Stacy and they spent an inordinate amount of time on this and there's time well spent. Uh, but um, anyway, it's a very complex document. Has anyone got any questions about this? Um, as Mr. Ayer looks to roll this out. All right, hearing none, we will move. We'll continue down the agenda. Uh, next item is uh, old business. Do we have any old business to come before us this evening? Hearing <laughs> none, uh, we will move to the consent agenda. Um, we have the consent agenda for you. Um, any questions or comments about that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Richard. I would uh, make a motion that we adopt the consent agenda. Or there's a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Comment? I would just uh, offer my apologies to Sheriff Hartman and, uh, and uh, Officer Mosley, Mosley last week for, or last month or other, <laughs> got excited and we didn't take action on the giving him a service revolver, but, um, or service weapon, but he, he got it, so <laughs> hopefully that will be all right. So, I have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Seeing none, call for the vote. Uh, I guess, hey, Ed, you yes. can call for the vote. Yes, Mark Jones? Yes. Benita Finney? Yes. Terry Reniger? Yes. James Blakely? Yes. Richard Poindexter. Yes. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, next, we move to the county manager's report. Mr. Chairman and commissioners, um, as I kind of alluded to a minute ago, Davie County government continues continues to provide our services the best we can to our citizens. We're just doing it a different way. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have our contingency plans in place uh, to try to protect both our citizens and our staff. Programming and events have been canceled and postponed in April and throughout May. Uh, we haven't quite yet uh, decided what to do in June because we want to say we want to wait and see what the uh, governor and president uh, do for for this long term as we look forward. Uh, so we'll reassess June events after we see what happens there. I do want to thank our Emergency Operations Center team. Uh, I, I can't thank these individuals enough. All of our department directors have done a great job in this process, but the EOC folks are, are there uh, on, on the front lines doing what they do every day, and, and we thank them for that. We're also working on a weekly update from our emergency operations folks. Uh, we, can, we will continue to put those on YouTube. Uh, we've done one episode so far, uh, and we'll do that until this pandemic's passed us, and it will include questions and themes we're hearing uh, as we do our work, and we'll invite different guests weekly to talk about different resources that are available. Uh, if you go to our homepage, the questions comments link can be found on the bottom left-hand corner. That's where we'll be getting information uh, as we go week to week on those. But that's one other method in addition to our social media sites and our county website uh, that we'll, we'll try to get information out. And I think the participants who helped us with that last episode. We said in all of our updates uh, that a, our COVID-19 hotline is staffed by our public health nurses. Uh, those numbers are posted on our websites, but uh, they're also here, and I'll read those at 
336-7560 or 336-753-6550. Either one of those work, and we encourage all of our residents to continue to follow us on different social media sites for real-time updates. Those can be the general county social media sites or uh, public health, EMS, or, or other, or the uh, any of others that we may have departmental-wise. Um, we also have been telling everyone that for case counts, some of the executive order links, frequently asked questions, or even, even daily data, as Ms. Wright mentioned, you can go to uh, the public health uh, webpage, but you can also go to uh, www.daviecountync.gov forward slash 96. Uh, don't know what's special about the 96, but I'm sure <laughs> it, there's something about that. But uh, if you'll go to that URL, that's where we keep all of our most up-to-date information for you. We have received several questions about the governor's executive orders. Uh, we've referred those folks to the governor's office for any interpretation uh, because we're, we're not interpreting those ourselves. Uh, but that number is 919-814-2000. Or you can also go online at governor.nc.gov forward slash contact to submit an online question or comment regarding those. Uh, we've also received, quest received questions about um, which businesses are essential or not. Uh, we've given our citizens uh, and individuals uh, the right information to call for that. The North Carolina, North Carolina Office of Emergency Management is collecting information on those businesses that uh, wish to be deemed essential. Uh, if, if they wish to get that state designation and any individual questioning uh, whether a business is essential or not, we have an email address for those. It's B E O C at N C D P S dot gov. That's B E O C at N C D P S dot gov. Uh, you can also go to the North Carolina Department of Public Safety at their website at www.ncdps.gov. Uh, and that is the website as well. So you can email uh, that uh, account I gave you or you can go to the website. But we have received information about that. We've also been asked, and, and I know our chamber's trying to do the best they can as well in, in helping our small business folks, but we've received questions about unemployment assistance for anyone who may have had their hours reduced. Uh, because of the COVID-19 epidemic, they should consult with the North Carolina Division of Employment Security. More information can be found by going to the Department of Commerce Employment Security's website, uh, and I'll try to, um, um, you guys can, can Google that as well if you have any questions, but that number is 888-737-0259. Again, that's 888-737-0259 for unemployment-related questions. And uh, I'll end with this, that, um, you know, I mentioned budget earlier as, as all municipalities and towns and counties are are trying to see what the impact of this is going to be going forward, particularly with uh, uh, some of the orders in place. But as we think about um, where we are, obviously we're still required to pass a balanced budget by before July 1. And I know Ms. West and I will, will begin uh, uh, to continue to work on that. Obviously, this thing has uh, uh, taken us taken us all uh, to the to the forefront, and uh, uh, I, w I won't say we're behind on budget. That's that's not an accurate statement. But uh, in a normal April month, we would be talking more about budget than COVID-19, uh, and and that is uh, absolutely uh, what we hope to get back to here very soon. But uh, more to come on that. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes um, my report. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Allen? Uh, this is uh, the county, the state county commissioners had a meeting today, tele meeting, and one of the things that came out from that is to uh, requesting a resolution from local board to send to federal government asking them to consider stimulus to help local governments and uh, as soon as that becomes available I'll be forwarding that to Mr. Eller and asking him to get y'all's input on that. Um, I think that's something we should consider because our, 
our budget is clearly going to have issues like everyone else's. So to the extent we could get some help in the short run would be positive. So any other comments, questions for Mr. Eller? Okay. Seeing none, we'll or hearing none, we'll move to Commissioner's comments. Uh, Ms. Penny. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I just want to thank John and all of the staff at Administrative Level who have worked through all of these obstacles that have been placed in our path by no doing of our own. Okay, well, and for all the work that you've done. Has left the conference. Yeah. And Suzanne, thank you and all of your staff for everything that you've done. John Daniel, thank you for getting the technology together for us to uh, be able to have this conference call. Um, I want to give a special thanks to our first responders. Um, you all, I know, have just had to go into unknown territory, which you always do every day, but even more so in the last few weeks than usual. And a lot of our fire departments were not prepared for this when it comes to PPE. And I want to give a shout out to Brian and Cameron for getting some additional PPE items to our fire department today. That is a great gift, and I appreciate so much you all taking care of these guys and girls who volunteer their time to take care of us. I have seen many wonderful things happen during the last few weeks. I have observed small business owners walking into restaurants and just putting money in a tip jar just because they know that these waiters and waitresses are struggling. Um, we had small business owners to buy meals for first responders and out-of-work beauticians and these business owners that are doing, making these gestures are suffering themselves because their business is less or so. That is just a testament of how important our small businesses are to our county and how they are the reason I'm trying to come from strong because they take care of each other. They know what it's like to uh, be in a struggle, but they're, they're still putting everybody else first. I'd also like to give a shout out to the school system. As far as my household is concerned, this transition to online learning has been wonderful, and the staff at Davie County Early College has been amazing to reach out and help my graduating senior, who is um, struggling emotionally because he's going to miss two graduations possibly. But all of the um, personnel in the school system that I've dealt with have just been phenomenal to uh, make sure that as much is being done as possible and that all of this, these kids are getting meals and everything they can possibly do in their power to make this as easy as possible. Um, as an essential working family and a graduating senior and a self-employed small business veteran, I for one hope that we get everybody in this county back to work as soon as possible because I am just really worried about the repercussions that all of this is going to bring to our economy and to our families. So I'm looking forward to that being remedied very soon. Um, two last things. Um, during the storm last night, I sat, of course, awake and listened to the scanner, and we had several fire departments that had several calls. So these guys got out of the comfort of their own home and went and stood in the rain to take care of our citizens. Thank you very much. And just want to give a shout out to Rodney and his crew as this week begins telecommunicator week, and thank all the 911 dispatchers for everything they do for us. That's all. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Poindexter. I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who's worked so hard to get us through this and to take care of everybody. And hopefully it'll be over soon. Thank you. Hello? Did you, did you say me? I did. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> well, listen, I want to, I won't take but a second. I, it may take just a minute longer than it normally does for me on these comments, but uh, I want to thank uh, all of our staff, all of our county employees. I want to thank our emergency service personnel. Uh, and I definitely want to thank the citizens and small businesses of Davie County that um, are helping to carry us through uh, this very, very tough time. Um, I, and, and I want to kind of um, play off of what Benita said in terms of getting uh, Davie County and North Carolina back to work. Um, the, uh, and I appreciate the resolution uh, that the County Commissioners Association wants to present to get the federal government to help local governments uh, during this very tough financial time. But I hope that the County Commissioners Association would also take some level uh, of, of uh, effort to, to send resolutions to the governor uh, attempting to get North Carolina back to work again. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we've already heard about local budgets. Uh, there are estimates that one half of North Carolina small businesses will not make it out of, uh, of this um, stay-at-home order. Uh, we have citizens that are in financial dire straits, and um, we have a governor that's painting a very broad brush with this uh, with his stay at home order. We, we've already heard today that Davie County has 22, had 22 cases. We only have one active case right now. So I think it's very important that we begin the process after this April 30th date that the governor has indicated to us uh, that we begin to put North Carolina and Davie County back to work again. Uh, I sent Mr. Chairman to you and to the county manager a copy of a letter from the Gaston County Board of Commissioners and their chairman, Tracy Philbeck, uh, a letter that was sent to the governor uh, in regards to uh, this stay-at-home order. I wanted to read just briefly uh, a little bit from this letter. You know, uh, Thomas Jefferson said uh, that he would always prefer uh, dangerous freedom over uh, peaceful slavery. And so I think it's very important that, that we begin the process, as I said again, of getting this, this state and our county back to work again before, before it's too late for many of our small businesses. I want to read you just an excerpt from this letter that was sent to the governor. It says this. It says, uh, I know you're keenly aware of the ramifications and restrictions uh, are having on our economy and the morale of our citizens. Like you, not a day goes by that we don't hear from a business owner that is worried about how they can keep the lights on. The shutdown and uncertainty is causing uh, disruption that could take years to recover from. Because of that, and this is the Gaston County Board of Commissioners, uh, they would like to formally request that you once again allow counties to make decisions on how to proceed after the April 30th date. Uh, he said that we have health directors and other professional staff who know our county and, our, and the people of our county best. Uh, he says that he firmly believes that Gaston County, along with each of the other 99 counties, can best decide on how to address the risk in each of our home territories. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I just want to say that, that I am in agreement with uh, the Gaston County Commission, their chairman, that after April 30th, uh, we be need to begin very quickly the process of getting Davie County back to work. Davie County is not Mecklenburg County. Davie County is not Wake County, Durham, uh, or even Forsyth County. So um, I would like to say, see us formally uh, present some sort of resolution, some sort of letter to the governor uh, thanking him for the hard work he's done, but also encouraging no, uh, 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 no more extension of stay-at-home orders and strict um, 
uh, certainly we need to be uh, we need to be reasonable and wise about uh, the social distancing. But we can do that in a reasonable, rational way and get our uh, get our businesses back to work again. One small way might be, uh, especially with our restaurants, is to phase up. Uh, capacity numbers. In other words, start at 25% of capacity, then 50, then 75, then 100 as we get farther into this. But we have got to do something uh, for the citizens of our state who, who, um, who are not, who, first of all, are not getting the unemployment in a timely fashion that they've been promised, but secondly, want to work. And so, Mr. Chairman, um, I appreciate your patience in allowing me to do this. It's a very kind of um, weird way that we have to do this over the, um, the audio here. But uh, I would like to see us formally as the Davie County Board of Commissioners, um, uh, if the governor, again, extends with a broad brush uh, longer dates on the stay-at-home orders, more restrictive policies, uh, when the evidence for Davie County does not necessarily indicate that we need these strict, uh, these strict policies, uh, I'd like to see us move uh, to at least make contact with him in the fashion that um, the Gaston County Board of Commissioners has done. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you, and thank you all the staff that helped us uh, get this together this afternoon. Uh, our prayers are with all the citizens of our great county. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blakely. Well, I'd like to thank all the staff and employees uh, for all they're doing and, and working, uh, you know, diligently and, and within the new limitations of, of life. Um, emergency services, uh, of course, uh, you know, they're already uh, put into jeopardy every day. They put their lives in jeopardy, and now, um, you know, they're, they're the front runners. Them and the healthcare personnel are the front runners with helping us, uh, you know, the folks at the health department help us battle in, in uh, this, this uh, crazy uh, virus. Um, um, as, uh, as an owner of a small business, I've uh, been around a long time, run this company a long time, I can tell you that I've never seen anything like this ever. Um, GDP is looking to be 40% down starting next month. Um, basically, the economy's cut in half. Um, and I believe in getting people back to work uh, as soon as possible, but within means. Uh, so I, I do agree uh, with, with part of what Mark is saying. I, I think we should get back to work sooner than later because, because stopping is not an option um, while, while following uh, the guidelines and regulations within reason. Uh, you know, CDC is releasing newer, looser guidelines uh, for people to go back to work, uh, you know, checking temperatures twice daily and, and monitoring. So we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, even from the federal level down to the state, uh, you know, down to the county. So, so again, uh, people, people got to get back to work. So I do agree with that, uh, but we've got to do it smart. Um, the last thing we need is to have some kind of liability from the state level down to us, but, but we need to let them know, yeah, we, we need to get back to work, and that is correct. Um, um, you know, so again, I wish everybody's family uh, safety. Um, let's, like I said, let's get through this crazy time and go back to, to, to good America, working, uh, having a good time, weekend events, baseball, I mean, all these things. A lot of men have changed. Life has totally changed, and, and, and nobody's ever seen anything like this. So, so thoughts and prayers to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would just like to say, you know, I want to thank everyone that's been involved in our county and all our citizens for working within the constraints that we've asked them to to make this as less painful as it can be. Uh, it's unique time. I do agree with what Commissioner Jones said. Um, we do need to get people back to work. I mean, for the, not necessarily the, the economic side, that's very important. But, um, you know, just the mental side of it. Um, mm -hmm. But um, we've got to, we've got to do that with, 
an eye towards safety, and I think we can. But uh, the point is, the point is well taken. Um, but uh, I want to offer prayers to everyone in the county, and let's just strengthen our resolve to get through this. Because uh, the sooner we can get through it and get back to where we were, you know, the old adage: you don't know what you got till it's gone. That has been very um, true during this last three to four weeks. So, anyway. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion. to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, before... I have a motion and a second. <laughs> yeah, and, go ahead. And I will call for the vote on that, uh, or not call for the vote, but as you call for the vote on that, I will take the roll call, and that will be the roll call at the end of the meeting also. Okay, did... John, did you say something? No, I was I was going to defer to Mr. Vogler. He beat me to it, so that's fine. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, I guess I guess we will call ask Mr. Vogler to call for the the vote on the adjournment and the vote on the roll call. Who did the motion and who did the second? Stacy needs to know that. Richard Poindexter did the motion. Yeah, Richard seconded the motion. Stacy Steele, did Richard do the motion and who did the second? James. I think James did, yeah. All right, okay. so okay. J James and then Richard, I believe. Okay, so I'll call for the vote up in Terry. I'll call for the vote here and then I'll take the roll call. Mark Jones? Yes. Benita Finney? Yes. Eddie Reniger? Yes. James Blakely? Yes. Richard Poindexter? Yes. And it looks like we've had all five for the entire meeting. All right. Thank you and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.